Who pops up in your mind when I say the word weight bully? For most people, that's Alex Pereira. But the thing is, they're wrong. You're wrong if you think Alex Pereira is a weight bully. And I know some of you might be thinking, Oh my, uh, 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 Alex Pereira cuts like so much weight though. Like, you see this? He weighed in at 184 and he, he rejuvenated back to 219. No, that's misinformation. Fake news. Alex Pereira did not come into the cage at 219. He actually came in at 210. It was on his Instagram. He said it himself on the scale and all. So I don't know where you're getting that information. Jizzy Riders. But calling Alex Pereira a bully is accurate because he does have a bullyish fight style. And what is a bullyish fight style? Well, it's usually fighters that kind of just impose their will on their opponent. It's synonymous with pressure fighting. Usually the pressure fighter is the one throwing on their terms or shooting takedowns on their terms. And they get to decide where the fight goes and they decide when they want to do their actions or game plan. Like some of their tactics involve powering their way through defenses, like a power striker would just blast the guard or someone with a really good chin, like a brawler would take one to give one. A grappler that's really powerful on the ground would just lean more in their physicality than their skill to take someone down. And when they're on the ground, they would use power to transition and force themselves into a better position. But from all of these examples, which style relies on weight to perform bullying? That's a pretty tough one. Not the style that clearly leans on weight more than the other is grappling because weight in grappling plays more of a factor than weight in striking. And you might be thinking like, how is this even true? How can weight in grappling be more of a factor than weight in striking? Well, little bro, it's simple. Tell me, what is the goal of grappling? Well, if you don't know, and you never grappled before in all grappling sports they all share a common goal which is to manipulate your opponent that's what they all share and in order to manipulate your opponent's body you have to be in contact with them you have to be grabbing them and you have to be in a closed space to hold on to them and to either drag them down like in wrestling take them down pin them in folk style or lift them up in the air and do some crazy tricks like in freestyle or submit them like in sambo or jujitsu any of the even judo too you have to be in a closed space majority of the time that's where most of the action takes place and with that constant contact with your opponent just holding on to each other okay weight is a constant factor and plays a much bigger role than in striking in striking the meat and potatoes of striking is out in the open in distance boxing kickboxing muay thai you need space to land your strikes you're using a combination of weight and speed to create momentum to strike your opponent. In wrestling and other grappling arts, it's more of using strength compared to striking. I'm not saying that grappling has no skill, like every single sport in the world has skill. And in terms of combat sports, grappling is like the least flukiest way for someone to win. But between grappling and striking, the difference is clear on which sport relies more on weight. So now that you know, when I ask you this question again, which fighter pops up in your mind when I say the word weight bully? It better not be Alex Pereira, okay? Point the finger at Hamzat Shamayev and the Dagestanis. Look at all of them. Islam Makachev, Askar Askarov, Habib, all of them. They're all weight bullies. If we're going to be calling Alex Pereira a weight bully. <laughs> now, but um, you can also include Aljamain Sterling, any of the grapplers that are like really big for their weight class. And that's the trend you see with grapplers in the division, especially high level ones. If you take a look at all the successful grapplers in the UFC, you'll see that majority of them are pretty big for their weight class. Islam is pretty big for his weight class probably like one of the biggest aljamain sterling askar askarov when he was in the division unless you're a cardio beast like kamaru uzman kobe covington or marab you're gonna be a big giant grappler and that's the best way to go if you are a grappler i do not blame these guys you want to take as much of a legal advantage that you can coming into the fight everyone does it literally everyone that's why everyone cuts weight being big is complementary to grapplers it just helps your their style to dominate because they're in constant contact. For strikers, they kind of want to be a little bit more lean and fast so they can just glide through space, close the distance or retreat faster and just throw faster strikes. So I know I'm kind of like pointing the finger at Dagestanis, most of them, that they are weight bullies because they are. And if you're going to use that term, use it correctly, okay? Point the finger at the right person, not Alex Pereira. Point it at those Dagestanis. There's no bias here. It's just fact. Look at them. They're huge and they grapple. But is it cheating? or sanctioned cheating. 
which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. How can something be sanctioned cheating if it's sanctioned or legal? Because if it is legal, then it's not cheating. Thank you, Uncle Chael, for explaining this to me. If you guys don't know, Uncle Chael already broke this down that um, weight cutting is not cheating. But I'm just here to relay that information from the great Uncle Chael that weight cutting is not cheating at all. First of all, it's legal. Second of all, everyone does it. So it just can't be cheating. But here's the real question. Is it cheesing? In my opinion, it is cheese if my favorite fighter loses to them. So yeah, kind of. But to be fair, there are consequences and cons of cutting a lot of weight. So it's not like they're having a total advantage for the entire game of MMA. Like preparation. The preparation isn't going to be as good as someone cutting less weight because the weight cutting process is hard. But when you're a big guy, you're going to have to cut more weight and focus more on your weight cut than the other guy. So you're going to be having less time learning and developing skills during the fight camp and the disadvantage during the fight is the chin man that chinny chin chin which actually depends on how bad the weight cut was because usually even though if someone cuts a lot of weight they're not gonna be like james vick but when you do botch a weight cut like figueredo in the rematch got dropped by a freaking jab that's a big problem right there that means he he effed up in his weight cut because in the trilogy he came back stronger and was eating a lot of shots because he actually weight cut it properly and i think he might have slimmed down a little bit but regardless there is going to be an issue with the chin if you cut a lot of weight because you're just going to be more dehydrated and i dehydrated brain means you can't take that much damage so that is how weight bullying works and remember it's only cheese if your favorite fighter loses to a dagestani grappler yes i'm salty so let me cope but to be fair for the weight bullies out there sterling hamza shamai oh my god it's from makashev that's not the only way these guys win i, I truly believe that 90 percent of the fight really goes down to iq and just how how the fighters play their cards whoever plays their cards the best wins period so i don't want to take away from any of the dagestanis or aljermaine sterling or whoever's a weight bully at the end of the day just make weight and alex Pereira never missed weight yet hopefully but hamza did he almost pulled off the towel gate 2.0 and they did even settle the scale for habib like they, that was the fastest weigh-in i've ever seen in my life and it looked like habib failed to wait so <laughs> i'm just saying i'm just spitting truth right now but that's it i'm done goodbye